All right, so we're gonna be replacing this dishwasher today. Uh, it's got a few problems. Um, number one problem is right there. Don't ever buy a Samsung. <laughs> as far as I know, this has been here since the house was built about 20 years ago. And it's got a few problems. Um, main problem is these baskets keep rusting. Um, you can see these fingers, they, I don't know if the coating comes off the bottom, because you can see these ones are fine. Um, but somehow water got underneath the coating and just rusted out the, the metal underneath. So these are falling off right and left. They're missing from a bunch of places. There's a tip that's damaged there. Um, and then it just, it doesn't seem to dry properly. So I went ahead and ordered another one. The new one's coming in with a third rack on top. So that'll be nice. So I'm going to show you today how to re remove the old one and install the new one. The first step to removing the old one is to look under the edge of your countertop and see you have you should have two tabs that secure it in and that's to keep it from tilting forward uh, when you have like this tray pulled out and it's heavy well you can see that the installer never connected those because when i push down on the door the whole thing moves so we'll have to make sure we attach the new one um, so being that those aren't attached right now this should pull out and then we can access our electrical and plumbing in the back all right i've got the old unit pulled out you can see the connections here Hopefully it comes with a new drain line because this one is pretty nasty. It is hardwired. Um, depending on the code in your area, you may have a plug-in style or you may uh, be hardwired. Um, so we'll see at the new unit what, what it is. If it's a plug-in unit, I may have to put a receptacle under there. And then of course you have the water fill line that goes over and taps into the sink. So we'll have to shut that off before we disconnect it so we're not spraying water everywhere. And we'll have to disconnect the electrical that goes in right down there. Actually, it looks like it goes underneath. So I'll have to tilt, up, tilt it forward and see exactly where that line goes. Um, and then we'll have to find the breaker that turns it off so that we don't get zapped. So once we disconnect those, we can bring the new unit in. All right, the electrical was not in the back as I thought it was. The, the wire was just going underneath. The dishwasher and the electrical connection is in the right hand side of the front here. You got to take this um, kick plate off the front. There's two screws and then there's a, a cover that covers the electrical. I can see one issue here. It looks like uh, whoever wired it did a, a decent job using quality wire nuts here, but they did not use this, the tension relief. There should be a little clamp right here. The danger of not using that is that um, if there's any vibration, the rough edges, like I almost just cut my finger just touching it right there, um, those rough edges can basically fray the wire and short it out with vibration over time. I'm surprised this one didn't. It doesn't look like there's any damage on there. But when we put the new one in, we'll make sure that we use that proper strain relief. If you've never seen one, it looks like it has a nut on the top with threads, and then underneath there should be two screws and those tighten down on the wire. Hopefully the new one comes with one, as I don't know if I have one in my garage, but we'll we'll address that when we get there. All right, um, I'm out here at the power panel outside the house in North Carolina. They put these on the outside of the house instead of inside the garage. Um, but we have one here uh, labeled dishwasher here, which is great. I'm glad they labeled it because I thought it was fed off of the GFCI outlet above it, and it was not. So I have the breaker in the off position here. Um, my fiance's inside. She just verified the power went off to the dishwasher. So we're safe and we can disconnect that old one and get ready to put the new one in. All right, so I had to remove the side panel as well. This is on the, uh, the left-hand side. You can see my water connection is going in here. There's an elbow. Uh, we can unscrew it right here. I've turned the water off underneath the sink already. So there shouldn't be too much water that drains out of there. Um, I did have to put a towel under the front corner because when I tilted this forward so I could get to the strain line, a bunch of water came out just so you guys know since this is um this is typically below your plumbing level right so this drain tube goes up and then under the sink and then it ties into the sink drain right there and so obviously if if you know how gravity works there's no way for the water to drain that way um so this right here is a pump and it should have a fluid sensor right there. That's what that power cord is for. So when this starts emptying out, the fluid comes in here. And I believe this is the access for the pump right there. And it pumps the wastewater. Um, I'm just following this. It looks like it pumps it in here. It comes up here and then it gets pumped out 
the drain line. Um, the only trouble I'm having right now is this retainer clip that I have to disconnect to get this tube out. There's two prongs in the back. I can barely touch one of them right there. So I have to see if I can get a screwdriver or pliers in there to squeeze those two tabs together. And that should release this spring fitting right here. All right, so we have the old dishwasher taken out. I've just got the wire hook there. That wire is dead from the breaker still. Um, the drain line, I'm gonna have to replace that with the new drain line that came just because the old one might be brittle or something. My, if, since I have a new one, might as well replace it. The water fill line looks to be in good condition, but I have a new one that uh, came with the dishwasher. I think I paid an extra $10 for it. So I'll probably put the new drain line on. I'm sorry, fill line. So next thing you want to do, gently lay it on its back after you take all the packaging off. We've already gone inside and taken all of the twist ties and I mean, there's so much packaging. That's that's all the packaging, the styrofoam, twist ties, everything. Be really gentle when you're taking the twist ties off. That middle rack was tied to a water supply line in the back. And um, if you try to pull that shelf too hard, um, you're going to pull on that water line and probably break it. So make sure you look really closely for the wires. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take this kick plate off the front with these two screws that will access the water there. Uh, I'm sorry, the water, that's the electrical there. And it looks exactly like the old one. And then there is our fill supply line. So I'm glad I bought the new one because it's a little bit longer because the old one went to the back side. This one goes underneath right here and connects to the front and the electric connects on this side. So the only thing that's in the back is the drain line will connect that. It did come with a new hose clamp, so that's good. Um, so the, let's get this kick plate off and we'll go from there. Oh, the other thing you're gonna wanna do while you're here is you're gonna wanna adjust your leveling feet because uh, once you slide this in, you will not be able to reach the back ones. So you wanna preset your back ones to the correct height. And then uh, once you slide it in, then you can adjust the front ones as you need. All right, two things that do not come with installation. Your pipe tape, you're gonna to wanna to put that uh, when you screw the new supply line underneath the sink. Put some of this on the threads first. Luckily, I had some on hand. And then the new one does not come with the strain rate leaf. Um, so luckily I had one in an old tool bag that I just found. So I'll put that there so that it's proper and it can't pull out or vibrate loose or anything. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get this thing installed. All right, I got my new drain line hooked up. It goes up and over, goes into the drain line of the sink. That's secured with a ho um, hose clamp. And then it's secured down here with a hose clamp at that 90. I've got the new water supply run and I've already got it connected under the sink to the hot water side. Make sure you do hot water side. Um, and then the two channels underneath the dishwasher that the water and electric go through, I've got the water supply line already tucked under there so that when I slide the whole thing in, it should hopefully go all the way through to the front. Same thing with the electrical wire. So now we can go ahead and push this thing back in place. Oh, before you slide it in, make sure you install these, uh, these retention straps. They just hook in right here and then flip down. And then once you get it under there, you'll be able to open the door and put the screws up into the bottom side of the countertop. Make sure you put those in before you slide it in because you'll have a real hard time getting them in if you don't. All right, hopefully you enjoy laying on your belly on the floor as much as I do. Got the fill line connected there. This is all tightened up. On this brass piece that goes into the machine, make sure you put thread tape on there so it doesn't leak later. Um, you can push all your extra slack back underneath. And uh, I've just got mine pulled out under the sink because there's not really room behind the dishwasher for the extra. For the electric, I've got that pulled through. We had a little bit of extra, so I just tucked it in here. Um, I may have to tuck it a little bit further back in there so I can put the kick plate back on when I'm done. I've just got to make this electrical connection. I got to go find some wire nuts because it did not come with wire nuts. I'm unsure why, uh, but I'll connect the electrical. Again, this is turned off at the breaker or I wouldn't be touching it, uh, but basically white to white, black to black and green to green. Oh, uh, green goes to your bare wire here, uh, which is your ground. Once I connect those, I'll tuck them back in that little box, put the cover back on install the kick plate, and then we should be able to test it. All right, those connections are all made up. You can see these are these are good quality wire nuts. I happen to have some in the garage. The, the ground one is not as important, so I just grabbed this cheap one. But I like these ones with the wings on them um, because they cover the wire a little bit more. They go a little bit deeper in there. And with the wings, you can really torque down on them. I like to get mine tight enough so that they wrap like that. 
it just gives them a little bit more tension relief. But I'll tuck those in there, get the cover on. All right, we got the power back turned back on. You can see that this one has LED lights inside. That's really nice. You can see them right up there. And then um, this